In this video, we're just going to take a real quick look at creating a uh, a badge or a patch here inside Inkscape. So I am going to first of all import the artwork here. And the first thing we're going to do, this is a bit of a rough sketch here, but we're going to pull over a guideline to represent the center position of our design. And then we're going to grab our pen tool here and we're going to click on, let's turn snapping on. We are going to click on our uh, guideline and then we're going to click up here. We'll go over here. We'll come up here. Uh, we'll do one there, there, and then we'll do one over here. Okay. So that pretty well takes care of all of that. Now, when we uh, we're in our node tool here now, and we pull down, we can control what that path looks like exactly. So like, for example, right here, we just click and drag, and we can pull that down and position it however we want to. I might choose the auto smooth function right there to smooth that one. This one here, we'll just pull it out. And then uh, if we click on a node, we get these control handles and we can really fine tune exactly uh, what it is we want to do with that path. You can pull the note in and out and you'll have, you know, you could really manipulate this exactly how you want it. So let's just come up here and we'll do something like that. And let's just call that close enough. Um, it was a pretty rough sketch, so this is probably okay. We're just going to pull this over here just so we can kind of take a peek at it by itself. I'm going to go ahead and delete the artwork now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and duplicate this. We're going to hit Control D to duplicate it. I wish there was some kind of confirmation, some kind of little ding, something that happened in Inkscape to tell us that that uh, was successfully duplicated. But if you go to the Layers palette, you see, in fact, we do have two. But there's just nothing that happens that really indicates that we really did get a secondary one. And you know what? Let's delete that just real quick. Let's look at our path and see, like maybe right there we could auto smooth that. Um, I don't know if there was anything that we wanted to change before we duplicated it, that would be the time to do it. So let's just go ahead and duplicate it. And then we'll go ahead and mirror this. And we'll just pull this over. And then we can grab it and move it. So we'll just come in here and we'll grab it from the end over here and move it to the end over here. And now we've combined those two. Um, but we have to select both, and now something is amiss here. What happened there? Something, something isn't right. Let's go ahead and delete that, and let's uh, duplicate this again, because if it's lining up up top, it should line up at the bottom, and this one didn't. There we go. Now she's lined up. So now we will go ahead and we'll go to Path and choose Combine right there and then there's one last thing we really should do and that is right up here you can't really see it but we're gonna join those two nodes and there you go so there is our path so there's a couple of things um, now let's go ahead and get rid of our guideline we don't really need that so a couple of things first of all we have to change the size we have to tell it what size patch we want to make which in this case let's say um, I don't know, let's say, let's just say we want to make it six inches. Okay, I don't really know how big a path you want, but you could make it whatever size you want. All right, so now that we have that, um, there's a couple of things we got to think about. So when we, now we're kind of going to move into the embroidery phase. What do we have to do this to embroider what we want to embroider? Well, the first thing that we need is a running stitch. And what that's going to do is that's going to hold our material down. We'll do the running stitch, and then we would trim our material as close as we can to that running stitch, and then we would stitch some satin stitches. So let's go ahead and make a duplicate of this. And then uh, let's go to the stroke. Now, what, what, how big a satin stitch are we looking for? Let's say we're looking for, um, I don't know, two and a half millimeters. Uh, whatever you, whatever size you want. Let's just say we want two and a half millimeters. Let's go back to our layers palette here. 
So we have our running stitch and we could name this. Sometimes I will go ahead and do that just to help me differentiate it a little bit. If I'm looking at the file later and we would call this satin. So we'll do satin. Let's just do satin 01 because I'm going to do a couple of things here. So there we go. So we have two and a half millimeter satin stitches. So if I want to convert this to embroidery, um, what I would do then is go ahead and uh, go to extensions, ink stitch, and then we can come down here to tool satin and we can convert this line to satin. So we'll go ahead and choose that option. And then the software went ahead and converted that to satin for us. Okay. And so now if we look at it, let's see what the uh, what it did for us. That would be our next step. So we'll go to ink stitch, we'll do visualize, and we will look at the uh, simulator here. I see some things in the artwork that's a little bit off, but just because it's a little bit off in the artwork doesn't necessarily mean, you can see here it's running our running stitch. And then it's going to do our satin stitches. Okay. Now I am going to fast forward through this a little bit. And you could see that basically it did a pretty good job up until right there. It didn't do a great job right there. See how nice and pointed this is, but this is not nice and pointed. So that happens sometimes. We don't necessarily get a perfect result. I can't really explain why. Uh, over here, it did, you can see, it did a pretty good job uh, over here, but over here, it didn't do such a good job. And like I said, I don't really know why that is. There's, there's, uh, there's two separate paths there, so I'm not really sure why it ultimately did what it did. Uh, but we can fix this fairly easily, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these nodes back to this point here and then on this side we will go ahead and delete this back to there and then that will take care of that and then we can just kinda drag this one up and then we could drag this one up to match it and so now we can kinda see if now if we have a similar result so let's just see what happens if we do that now this is um, the part that's a little bit, mm, you know, a little bit not perfect, I don't think, um, because um, sometimes you have to play with the artwork a little bit and you have to know what needs to be played with. But let's just kind of fast forward. Well, we can already see that that looks pretty good now. So um, you can see how it relates to the other. And now you can see, yes, now we have uh, what we need to have. Uh, if we were gonna, if you're we really gonna nitpick, you see how this looks. This looks a little strange for some reason, and you'll see that. See that extra little line right there. Well, what that tells me is there's, there's a break in the satin stitch right there. And if we look at our artwork, let's see once if I'm if I'm right here. So yes, see there. That's where the break in the satin stitch is happening. And so that's why we get that extra little line there that's uh, maybe just a little bit off there. Um, one thing that we could do, um, this is kind of more of an advanced thing, but we can add, um, we can add in additional, uh, we'll go ahead and select these two. Let's see here, not that one. We can do this one and this one. And uh, let's go back to 0.5, and then we'll take these are additional stitch angles. I don't, I couldn't tell you necessarily if that's going to fix the problem. Might. There we go. It might. It might not. So that's still separate from that. So we're going to go ahead and. Combine those two. So now that's part of that path. So let's just see if that did in fact do anything for us. I can't say for sure if it will or not. But let's go back to Ink Stitch, uh, Visualize and Simulate.
And we'll fast forward through this a little bit. And you can see now we get this kind of crazy mess. And that's because I I'm glad I'm glad I showed you that actually. Um, but that's because we modified our satin column but didn't uh, reconfigure it. So if we go back into uh, ink stitch here, go to params, we have to tell it because we added those stitch angles. So now we have to tell it, hey, this is a satin column again. Because when you, when you modified that, we, uh, we closed that out. We, we got rid of the satin column properties. So we'll do that same thing over here. Now you could do them both together. Uh, you didn't have to do them separately. So uh, we will just run through that real quick and just take a look at it. And let's, yeah, let's just go ahead and, and apply and quit that. And then let's look at it as a whole again. So now one more time, go in here, ink stitch, visualize simulator. And we'll just fast forward through the design real quick just to speed it up. Okay, so that did not, that stitch angle really did not affect that really at all um, doing that. So, which is fine. It's That's not a big deal. Like I said, it, it, that's, it's just a slightly different than this one, but it's still pretty good. Um, I think you'd still be happy with, with it stitching out like that. All right, I probably would not have broke it there, but I might have broke it up here or something. But, you know, that's just what the software gave us automatically. And if we really wanted to go through and painstakingly edit all that, we certainly could. Now, what we would probably do um, before outputting this as, uh, as our um, embroidery file is we would probably give our running stitch a different color. And so, um, so the machine would stop after it did the running stitch and it, it's thinking we need a new color but we actually don't need a new color and then it would go ahead and do our satin stitching okay um, so that's one thing that we could do now what if we wanted more than one satin color well what the, what we could do is there's a function uh, here in Inkscape if we go to path and there's two options here that says inset outset okay and you can see the keyboard shortcut for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to duplicate my running stitch here. So now I've duplicated my running stitch, and then we're going to do that control. Um, I'm not really sure the official term, but I I always call it um, brackets. But I don't know if it's really a bracket or not. But it's the uh, control nine on the keyboard, and if we just keep doing that. That will do inset, 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 inset. And I thought somewhere I read that the software does the inset every two pixels. It's a little strange that we cannot define exactly, at least I don't know how to do it, what the inset is supposed to be. Like it's, it's supposed to be an exact, you know, if we want to insert inset at a quarter inch or whatever, or three millimeters or whatever, I don't really know how to do that. but. There, and there may be a way, um, but I'm just not sure. Um, but anyhow, uh, we did two and a half inch columns, or two and a half inch, two and a half millimeter columns. Okay, so now we have now we have that. Now this is not a uh, not a sharp point. Maybe it's not required. I don't know. Maybe it's not required. We'll go ahead and delete that note. I don't think that's required. So I just kind of look at the artwork real quick and determine. You know, if there's something that needs to be changed in the path information here, I don't think we really need that one. Um, everything else looks okay, except there is definitely something happening up here that I don't think needs to be. And I think let's go ahead and set that to be a corner. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's pull over a guideline and let's maybe pull this up to there. I feel like that should be a sharp, a sharp point right there, and it's not. 
So we'll go ahead and delete that one. So this guideline right here, I think should be right there at that point, and then this should be right there at that point. Okay, so let's just go with that. We'll just uh, see what happens now when we convert this. So we'll go to Ink Stitch. We will go to Tool Satin and convert line to satin again. It'll work its magic. Let's take a look. Looks like the artwork is in pretty decent shape. A little strange that there's extra um, stitch angles over here that there's not over there, but um, but otherwise I think we're going to be okay. So let's go ahead and so that's those two paths right there. So let's give it a different color. So we have our running stitch and then we have our two satin columns on the outside and now we have two satin columns on the inside. So let's go ahead and select the whole thing and let's take a look at the design. Always have to double check the simulation. The artwork looks good. So there's our running stitch and I think this is a pretty cool thing about ink stitch. When we see these color options down here that tells us how many color changes. So we're running our running stitch, pausing, we're running our first satin border, and then we're running our second second satin border. And yes, everything looks good. Um, I don't know, this, this could be possibly, I think the stitch angle looks a little bit weird going into that corner. I would take a look at that. Because um, that does look like the stitch stitches are going a little bit to this way. So maybe, yes, I do see that. So maybe we could, we'll just try this and see if we can modify this at all. So we'll put the stitch angle there. Let's turn off snapping for a moment. And we'll put a stitch angle there. Put one there. And let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. Except I think those will be two different ones. So let's go ahead and select that one, that one, and that one. And we'll combine it together. We will change our stroke size here. And then we'll do the same thing over on this side. Those two and that one. Combine those together, change our stroke size here. All right, now we do have to redefine these as satin columns again. So ink stitch params, because we added to it. So that's why we have to go in and redefine those as satin columns. And yes, if you check out that corner right there, that, that comes into and out of the corner much better as, the, as, it, as it does there as well. Um, so yes, that is much better as a whole. So one last quick looky-loo here. Let's go ahead and select everything and we'll go to Ink Stitch Visualize and we'll simulate that real quick. We'll go ahead and just blaze through this and look at the finish of the design. So you can see it's running our running stitch. We're going to put our fabric down, do that running stitch, trim our fabric, come in here with our satin stitches, and there you go. Our badge is then complete. So of course, you know, you, the amount of offset and, you know, spacing between all your satin columns and all that, you can con obviously control, but that is, generally speaking, how you would go about laying out a patch um, to stitch out the way you want it to here inside of Ink Stitch um, using Inkscape for, uh, for all the initial artwork. Hope that helps and thanks for watching.